In this video I'm going to show you how to use Gauss View to set up a redundant coordinate scan. So for this example we're going to draw a water molecule. I'm going to go ahead and select my oxygen, just place my water molecule, it default comes with two hydrogens on it, and then I'm going to scan over angles and I'm going to use a relatively inexpensive level of theory for this calculation just so it runs fast in the video and I know the bond length isn't, or excuse me, the bond angle isn't correct at this cheap level of theory. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the angle tool to set this angle down to say 95 degrees. So that would be sure that we scan over an appropriate range. Then to actually set up the scan I'm going to use this redundant coordinate editor up here. So if I click on this and bring it over you'll see this window. And so what this window allows me to do is define special coordinates in the similar fashion to how you define coordinates in a Z-matrix. So I'm going to start off by adding a coordinate. At the moment it's unidentified, but I want to scan the angle, the HOH angle in this case. So I'm going to select the angle option here and select the three atoms I'm interested. Turns out these atoms are atoms 2, 1, and 3 in the way Gauss View has defined my water molecule. And then I'm going to come here and I'm going to change this to a scan. So this is going to set it up to scan over this HOH angle. I'm going to have it take five steps of one degree each. And you'll notice it shows that we're starting from a 95 degree angle because that's what I said a minute ago for this water molecule. Now I'm just going to set up my calculation. So to do this calculation, I'm going to you'll notice it's already set in here to scan and to do a relaxed redundant coordinate scan. So the relaxed means that as we do this scan, at each step it's going to freeze that HOH angle and it's going to optimize all other coordinates in our system. And you'll notice up here in the keywords it's saying opt equals mod redundant. That's a corresponding keyword that tells us it's going to be optimizing based on these redundant coordinates that we just defined. I'm going to set my method. For this case, I'll do a DFT B3LYP, and I'm going to use the really small STO3G basis. As I said, the results for this model won't be very physical or very realistic, but it will run fast for the sake of this video. I don't really need to change any other videos, but what I am going to do is I'm going to click on the edit button just so we can see the input file it's generated. I'm going to save it, go ahead and call it scan input file. And so here's the input file it generated. You'll notice here's my geometry and Cartesian coordinates. Here's the connectivity information. It's neutral, singlet spin, and so on. But the interesting line is down here. This is the scan coordinate that is defined. So the A corresponds to scanning over an angle. The angle is defined by atoms 2, 1, and 3, according to the ordering that the atoms appear here. We're going to scan, taking five steps of one degree each. And so you could actually add these types of commands by hand as well if you preferred instead of using the redundant coordinate editor. If you have a bond length, for example, there would only be two atoms here instead of three. If you had a dihedral, you'd have to specify four atoms here and so on. All right, but let's go ahead and close this and we'll start the job. It won't take too long to run. Once it runs, we'll be able to open it up and see the output and see how the energy changes as a function of that scan coordinate. So I'm going to go ahead and open the log file here. And so you'll notice our log file contains six geometries. And that's because the scan always does first an optimization at the geometry you specified. And then it takes a series of the five additional steps that I requested afterwards. And that gives us a total of six steps. If we progress through these, you'll notice my angle is changing, as you'd expect. If we come to the results, we can look at the scan option, and you'll see here's the scan generated by this. And so again, at each one of these angles, it froze the HOH angle, and it relaxed all other degrees of freedom. I could click on any one of these geometries if I want to see what the... Um, structure actually looks like. In this case it's not very interesting because it's just our water molecule, but this could be more interesting in a more complicated species. And notice it's also reporting the total energy down here. Of course all these energies and so on can be found in the text output files as well. 
So with this, this shows you basically what you need to set up some pretty complicated scans that can allow you to examine a variety of um, interesting behaviors on the potential energy surface where you scan over just one slice while relaxing all other degrees of freedom. That's all.